Okay, who are you and tell me your CYSC story. Um, I'm Luke Welsh and I came to CYSC through my family. Um, my mom found out about it and sent Shoot, I keep looking at the camera. This is bad. No, that's okay. <laughs> right, you know right. what? You can look around and be thoughtful and reflective in your okay. looking. I mean, kind of, Anna's a kind of a go-to point, but okay. you can kind of, you know, okay. in the course yeah, of conversation. If you want to look at the camera, then that would be me, but if you want to... Okay, okay. All right. My name is Luke Welsh, and um, I heard about CYC through my family. Um, my mom was actually the one who found out about it, and she sent my oldest brother, Patrick, to it. Um, that was probably 10 years ago. And um, Patrick had this amazing experience at camp and he really encountered Jesus there. And um, he just came back and told our family about the love of Jesus. And then my older brother Jack came um, as well. And then it just snowballed from there. Uh, and I'd grown up in CYC my entire life, basically. I've always wanted to go to camp. Um, and I finally got to go when I was going into sixth grade and I loved it. Um, and I've been part of the organization, I guess, for eight years now, seven as a camper, and the eighth one on staff. Um, and that is basically my story with CYSC. So, tell me the story that Anna maybe shared. I may, I'm just reporting from what she shared, but my take, come from a Catholic family, we go to daily mass, mm -hmm. we encounter Jesus through CYSC, and then your personal story of kinda, maybe that, what took you to get, what took, what did it take to get you through the door to close it and get on the road? Okay. Um, so, the summer of my junior year, camp was really amazing for me. Um, and that summer was great, but it got to school year and it was just kind of started shaking a little bit. Um, and it got to Christmas break of that year. And uh, I didn't have a, a set plan for a prayer that uh, during Christmas break. So I just quit praying. And that really felt, uh, left me feeling really empty inside. Um, and so I started trying to fill this gaping hole in my heart with all this crap. Um, I tried like, attention from other people, relationships, um, pornography, uh, just anything that I could just to fill this hole in my heart where Jesus was before. Um, and none of it worked. It all just left me feeling even more empty. And um, the more I tried, the bigger the hole got. So school comes back around and I decided, okay, I'm gonna start back up my normal routine. Um, but it didn't work. I still felt empty and my prayer was just almost pointless. And I didn't realize it at the time, but what I was doing was I was um, just truly trying to keep on sinning and still pray. I wanted to keep all this crap that I had used to fill my heart before and have Jesus, and I can't have that. Jesus wants either all of us or none of us. You can't go half and half. Um, so this went on for a while, and I just kept feeling emptier and emptier and emptier until one day I said, you know what, God, I'm done. I quit praying. Um, and that was the worst decision of my life. That made me feel so empty on the inside, and um, it just got worse and worse, and school started picking up, um, and things just got more and more stressful uh, until basically I was just super depressed all the time. Um, I was anxious. I had trouble sleeping at night. I didn't like talking to my family or any of my friends. Most of the time when I was at home, I was just up in my room by myself. Um, and I kept on going to youth group and going to church throughout all this, uh, probably more out of just obligation and like, uh, habit, but one night when I was at youth group, um, we had this, this format, the same every single time for youth group. We go to, uh, we hear a talk for probably the first 45 minutes, and then the last hour and 15 is Eucharistic adoration. And I was sitting in adoration, I hadn't prayed in probably three weeks at this point, and um, I was just sitting there, and I just started going off on God. I was like, you know what, God, I feel miserable. I can't stand who I am. Um, I wake up and look in the mirror and I hate the person that I am. I don't even know why I'm here. I don't know why you created me. Um, and eventually this rant um, became a desperate cry for help. Uh, I realized that I was so broken on the inside and I just said, God, I can't do this. And deep down in my heart, I heard an answer. I know you can't do this, but I can. Um, and from that moment on, I just realized that like, Jesus Christ not only came to the earth and died for my sins, but he actually wants them every single day, every single second. He wants every part of my being. Um, he didn't just come and die and like that's the end of the story. Like he is here and he wants me and my soul and he wants my heart and he wants me to love him and to follow him. Um, so ever since then, I've just been trying to live my life in such a way that I glorify and magnify the Lord as opposed to 
just thinking about him and just thinking that he was a nice thought 2,000 years ago. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Looking at Anna and continuing it, tell me the difference it's made. Like, you, you know, I can sleep now, blah, 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 okay. relationships, joy, okay. blah, blah, blah. Um, so after I uh, started praying again, uh, it was a little bit shaky at first, obviously. You know, I failed a few times. I think uh, my problem was I tried going straight back into my normal routine, and that didn't work. Um, so I gradually went back into it, and the more and more I prayed, the re I realized the more and more joy that I had in my life. Um, I started really just truly loving the person that I was. Um, and also along with that came like a deeper gratitude for my parents because they raised the person that I became. Um, and I just think that's the coolest thing that like, I'm just so happy that I am the person I am right now. And I think a lot of people can't say that. Um, they can't say, you know, I actually like who I am, but I really do. I, I personally enjoy who I am. Um, and I found that through my identity in Jesus Christ. Talk to young people. Speak to yourself the two, year, two years ago, whatever, Luke Walsh. Okay. Who's got faith, goes to Mass, experienced everything you magnificently articulated. Talk to them right now. Jesus Christ wants your heart so much. It's not about a big set of rules, and it's not about getting a concrete answer every single day in prayer. It is about loving the Lord, and He will love you back. He wants your heart so much. All you have to do is let go and run to Him. You just have to open your heart and say, Lord, I give myself to you. Even if you don't hear an answer, God still values what you are saying. Even if you think your, fruit, your prayer isn't fruitful, it still is. You have to go to the Lord every day and give every second of your life to Him. You, this message you really pronounce, but of course in Scripture, be ye therefore hot or cold. You've experienced that. You, you're, so just maybe emphasize that a little more. Really, you're going to go one direction or the other, and mm -hmm. most of us struggle because we're in the middle. Get out of the middle. All right. You have to be either with God or without Him. You can't keep waiting and saying, oh, well, I'll see you later, or maybe I'll just get holier when I'm older. That's not going to happen. You have to make a decision, you have to stick with it, and you have to follow the Lord. He will lead you to life and happiness. The devil wants to kill you and destroy you. He lies and he wants to make you think that you'll be happy, but you will not be in the devil. You will be sad and you will die. But the Lord brings life and he brings love. That's awesome. Uh, just what happened the other night, uh, adoration night? What was going on there? Um, we got into Eucharistic adoration and um, I just remember that, like, I, I was really mad. I was angry. Um, I didn't want to be at youth group that night. I didn't want to be around anyone. I'm poor, um, sorry, I paused. Yep. Uh, here, three days ago. Oh, at the right, camp. right, right. Yeah, switching gears a little bit. Okay. Tell me what was going on. Okay, do you want me to tell, like, the whole, it's kind of a... Uh, like, when we had the adoration, because I made intersperse with some pretty powerful shots of kids worshiping and, you know, God, three nights ago. Okay, okay, yeah, so you're... Wednesday, Wednesday night. Wednesday so night. So I'm shifting gears, I'm asking you to kind of say... Well, so, like, what's going on there? Like, it seems silly. Kids on their knees, hands in the air. Okay. This white-looking thing and a gold-looking thing. Okay. You know, what's going on there? All right. Um, do you want me to start in, like, saying at, on Wednesday sure. night? Or, okay. Sure. So, um, on Wednesday night of this week, we had Eucharistic Adoration. And um, what we really do at CYSC is we try to um, bring these kids to a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. And I believe there's no better way to do that than through the Eucharist, through the actual person of Jesus in the Eucharist. Um, and these kids were experiencing things that they maybe had never had before. Um, really charismatic prayer, uh, letting the Holy Spirit move and work within them. Uh, and so these kids are going outside their comfort zones and they're maybe um, getting down on their knees when no one else is, or they're, uh, they're raising their hands in worship or uh, crying out to the Lord uh, charismatically. And it's really just a beautiful thing to see people uh, surrendering, surrendering their bodies and uh, their spirits to the Lord. Awesome job, Lou. 